God's grace, mercy, peace, and um, the remembrance of your baptismal covenant with the Lord. Through water and the word, you have a special relationship with the Father. Might have happened a few years ago, Sid, hmm? but it's still uh, intact. So um, what a wonderful, wonderful day. And every time you come and confess your faith, you're visiting your baptism because of the Apostles' Creed. We do that almost every Sunday, one of the creeds. You're uh, acknowledging your baptism. Um, promise that he will be your God, and God promises that you are his child. And I like the word an heir. Don't you like that? Money. <laughs> I didn't mean it quite that way, but an heir. You are in standing to get the good stuff because he is your father. So why would you bail out? Why would you bail out? Your future is bright. And the good stuff, I said money, that course, um, eternal life, eternal life. Who can offer that? What religion can offer eternal life? But the Christian religion what a blessing. So Christmas is still on our minds. Joy to the world. Christmas has come. For many, the joy of this holiday season is the open gifts and the abundant food and beverage options. But that glow seems to fade fast. Here I brought a collection of our Christmas. Look familiar? Uh oh, I was going to bring a table. Now I'm going to try to control myself so I don't have to pick all this up. But this is kind of what's left. And it's a symbol, it's a symbol of um, the way most of the world feels. Hmm? And maybe us too a little bit. Maybe a little blue, the pack of the boxes are empty. Now of course the uh, contents are, maybe you're wearing it this morning. Hmm? A new sweater, something like that. So, oh, little pumpkin pie left. I had to do that. It's clean. But there ain't much left. And the, and, the, and the joy of Christmas is fast, for the world is fast, fast fading. They might have gotten, you know, a new garment which replaces the old one. Now the old one, which doesn't look any good because it's old, can you now go to the thrift store? Can you go to the store? They might feel... They might feel good because they got a new appliance, you know, a nice convenience, a new, a new appliance. Uh, but um, in a way, in a way it doesn't last. In a way it doesn't last. Mm -hmm. the, joy of this, the joy of the things of this world is as empty as the boxes strewn across the floor and the, and the pie pan the pie pan. A new garment might lift the burden of having to wear the old one, which can now be thrown away or taken to the thrift store. I got a set of screwdrivers, uh, a nice, you know, from Sears Craftsman screwdrivers for my, I wouldn't, I never asked for that. But my wife must have heard sometimes that I'm sick and tired of the Phillips screwdrivers that don't work. Has that ever happened to you? That the, the threads of the Phillips screwdriver are just as worn as the it's the screw there, and you're just going around in circles, you know, and you don't get anything fixed. And so I thought, ah, oh, now I can get the things tightened up. I have a screwdriver that, that works. You know, but what would really be nice is nothing ever broke. That's my point. So the burden is lifted. I can repair that. But wouldn't it be nice if there was something in these packages that went on forever and ever and ever and met our deepest needs, a joy that wouldn't end before the month is out. Our text today, Luke 2, 22 to 40, challenges us to rediscover the joy that gave the world a song of love for the ages. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. In contrast, our, in contrast to this, our Christ fills us with a joy that cannot be contained. There's no box big enough to contain the real content of Christmas, the real gift, a joy that can redefine your lives. I see most of you as 
pretty happy. You're, you're pleasant people. We all have our bad days. You're not near as grouchy as I can get. So think what Jane has to put, put up with. But wouldn't it be nice if you had a joy which just transcended this world and the mood of other people? Not just to, so people can say, look how happy she is, but an internal joy which carried you through life, which transformed your entire life and the end of your life. Let's take a short walk through the text and see if such a gift is, is there. The text shall notes, the gospel text, Luke 2, 22 to 40. Now in, chapter, in verse 22, where it starts out, it's, it talks about uh, two requirements which Mary and Joseph, being conscientious like they were, were going to keep. The requirements of after the birth of at least the firstborn, 40 days afterwards, the mother of the new child was to go to the temple for rites of purification, for rites of purification. And they did that, Joseph and, I love people who have integrity. I wish, I, I strive to be, in t be a person of integrity. If I say, if I say, I'll do it, integrity would, I would do it. Hmm? On the other hand, I'm disappointed when people when people don't have integrity. Mary and Joseph were people of integrity. Integrity. God calls us to that. God calls us to that. So they did that. And the second one was uh, to uh, present, sometimes it's called the redemption of the firstborn. That to me is a little confusing. But to present the firstborn according to the ceremonial law. Okay, they would dedicate, much like this morning, dedicate the firstborn to the Lord. Does that mean that Andrew would have to become a pastor or priest? Not necessarily, but he would be dedicated to the Lord. And they did that because those rules were found in the Old Testament. With this passage, Luke demonstrates the integrity of Joseph and Mary. And the integrity, their integrity and the integrity of the people they ran into stood in sharp contrast to the world where people come to church for various reasons, or they um, comply with God's rules for various reasons. Hmm. Do you remember when Jesus was older and he went into the temple and he was outraged at the exchange of money in the temple? And he was outraged uh, to the point he kind of acted out, and the point was um, the integrity of the house of God. This is a house of prayer. This is not a place for, for business contacts. If it happens, it happens. Hmm? This is not a place for social contacts. If it happens, it happens. The fellowship, that's important. But this is God's house. This is God's house. And some people take advantage of that. Well, let's move on to verse 24, the redemption or the presentation of the firstborn. With that came the requirement that they offer a sacrifice to the Lord. I would think that mom and dad here Moms and dads, by the way, Andrew has a precious little cousin. His name is Joaquin. Say hi to the crowd, Joaquin. <laughs> okay, the firstborn you would uh, present and you would offer a sacrifice. If you could afford it, you would buy a lamb, which would be about $100. If you couldn't afford it, you would buy something more modest, like pigeons or doves. It didn't make really any difference, but you would bring a sacrifice. A cheap pigeon or dove would be about $10. A higher quality, I don't know how else to say it, a fowl would be about $80. So it's a sacrifice on the part of the new parents to buy these and have them offered. And who is at this place in the temple? It's a man named Simeon, and I learned something. I always thought Simeon was the priest. I thought Simeon was the one that would take the, took the sacrifice, but he wasn't. He was an ordinary man. The text does not say that he was a church worker, that he wore robes, that he wrote sermons and things like that. But the Holy Spirit led Simeon, a man in Jerusalem, into the temple. That's you. That's you. You allow the Holy Spirit to lead you into God's sanctuary to encounter there what God has to offer for you. And Simeon, following the lead of the Holy Spirit, sensitive to the lead of the Holy Spirit, I hope you are. I know Sunday mornings aren't easy. 
You've had a hard week. You're so tired. You just want to sleep in or don't get back in the car. But you hear the call of the Holy Spirit. Hmm? Now, I'm here. I have to be here, right, so to speak. I'm the priest. But Simeon wasn't, and it was Sunday morning. And the call of the Holy Spirit says, Simeon, come to church. I got something for you. I got something for you. I like that, an ordinary man. He was not a prophet or one of the priesthood. He was just a man. However, he is a man that is righteous before God and upright before man. And when he comes, Joaquin, what does he see? What does Andrew see? Felt He felt the water. And in the water, in the word, he encountered Jesus. He encountered Jesus. Do you see that? You see Jesus in this? Well, my point is there's no box big enough to hold Jesus, but Jesus is here. And this baby that this ordinary man sees because he follows the prompting of the Holy Spirit is a revelation and a light. Those are important cues in the text. Jesus the Christ was revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit, and Jesus would be the light for the Gentiles and the glory, the brilliance of the Jews. I asked rhetorically, do you see Jesus? Do you see Jesus here? Well, yes and no. Yes and no. But if your heart is open and your ears are open and your eyes are open, he's here and he wants to present himself to you and reveal, him, reveal himself to you. You see him now? You see him now? Do you see him coming out of my words? I know you might think I'm talking goofy, but that's the way it works. Out of my words comes the Lord Jesus. And you hear him, and you say, I want, to, I want that. Come on in. Okay, and a revelation. What's the revelation? I have good stuff for you. you now, that's the revelation. Go, man, preach. <laughs> revelation is, I am your Savior from sin. I am your Savior from sin. I give you joy that cannot be contained in a box. I give you a real Christmas present. And the real Christmas present is eternal life, which no man can take from you. And a light, a light, like the baptism will come. And then, Lu uh, then Simeon says, he says a prayer. Uh, Lord, now dismiss me. Dismiss me. A lot of people have... Uh, re and I'm one of these people, when I hear the words, the song of Simeon, I think like, okay, let me go, let me go, I'm ready to go. Like maybe a very sick person. Maybe somebody's been fighting a terminal illness for so long, and just finally at the end is like, just let me go, take me home. Some of you might feel that way. You might not even have a disease, but um, you've, been, you've been blessed with seven decades uh, I mean, not seven, yeah, seven decades, eight, eight decades, nine decades. You're a centenarian, and it's like, I'm ready to go home. Lift this burden, lift this burden. So when, when Simeon says, let me just part in peace, we think, okay, lift this burden, I'm ready to go home. But it, it's more than the lifting of a burden. It's more than the lifting of a burden. It's a real joy that God gives as his gift in the Son which changes you, which changes you. In the, in the liturgical Latin, the song is called, you know what it is, what's the song of Simeon? What's it called? Nunc dimittis, now dismiss me. I don't think Simeon, after he saw the baby, Jesus said, Nunc dimittis. I think he said, Nunc dimittis. I now have joy, and I can face anything in life, whether it's shorter or longer, because I have eternal life. And he was a new person, a new person. Christmas, the revelation and light of Jesus in this temple can change your life because you have something solid. You have God himself, which is, we get here together on Sunday mornings and you're all, you're all pleasant, you know. But sometimes we come in here and it's like, mm, same old building, same old people, same old sermon, 
Mm, same old hymns. Like that. Yeah, we're happy. Nunc dimittis. But no. Nunc dimittis. I can take whatever comes. I am looking forward to this life and that, and I have a spring in my step. So what does this text then say? The evangelist Luke reveals that the true mission reveals the true mission of Jesus the Messiah. The true mission is to take care of our biggest problem and to send us joyfully into this world because we have really good stuff. Eternal life. Through Simeon and Anna, we see the transformative power of Christ in the lives of God's people. Lord, now you are letting your servant, ordinary man, church worker, depart in peace according to your word. For your eyes have seen, touched, smelled, felt, gazed into your salvation, the infant Jesus. You do that. You see him? Can you touch him? You feel him? You hear him? You smell him? Huh? that you were prepared in the presence of all people, a light for illumination to the Gentiles and for the fireworks of your ancient people Israel. That's a Gary Boy translation. Huh? For the glory, for the fireworks of your ancient people Israel. Our coming to the Lord Jesus brings glory to God's ancient people. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.